So yeah. does that give us like a cultural abandonment issue? Oh, for like sure. Like if you, if you had 9 million dads come in <laughs> and then yeah. you had 9 million dads leave. I'd have daddy wouldn't, issues. Wouldn't you have daddy issues? <laughs> yeah. I'm I not would. saying you do. I was buying a racetrack for $28 million in Wait, Utah. Wait, was it the Larry H. Miller? Yeah. That literally is five minutes from my house. I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. Me, yeah. I've yeah. done everything right and failed. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's just, it, it's you know, really it's a, so. Yeah, I do need your autograph here. Will you sign so, one of these for me? I, we'll get, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's probably what got you back up on your feet. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Carr right here and uh, I have a special incredible guest with me today you're gonna absolutely love. Um, I was at the coffee shop, I was with a friend of mine, we went to a French coffee shop. It is amazing. In fact, Nicole drives like 40 minutes just to go to this coffee shop and we'll get into that. But I was there with Steve and we were talking about, you know, the channel and then gamification which we're adding to the channel. And all of a sudden, an alarm went off and it, it was like a bomb was gonna hit the place. And um, I looked over and she turned off the alarm and I'm like, wow, well, I guess it's time. And um, that just led into a conversation where uh, she, she talked about how she was writing a book and we'll get into that. Um, and then I told her that I have the book, The Origin of Opportunity, and then things just went down. And next thing you know, said, you gotta come down to the studio. So this is an ambush interview. Literally 20, 30 minutes ago, we were at a coffee shop and we wanted to bring it to you. So I, she's got an incredible backstory, an incredible story, incredible just person. And I just wanted you guys to experience that here on the channel so that, because we talk about finance, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about the struggles and the concerns and the thoughts that people have about money and some of the thoughts came up as pretty intense moments, literally at a coffee shop, along with some ideas that I've been fighting with um, for a long time, for a couple of years. And uh, I figured we'd dive into that and share that experience with you guys. So, so, so many people have been on a journey with us, uh, the financial journey, the PPP, the PUA, unemployment, stimulus, all the stuff that's been going on in our world, this crazy world over the last 21 months. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Nicole. Hello. Can you tell them a little bit your name? My name is Nicole. I'm from um, Tule, Utah. It's like 20 minutes north of Salt Lake City. Um, what do you want to know? You tell me what I, oh, yeah. you got to tell <laughs> me. That was I, it. That's, that's, that's all you're getting. That's, that's it. That's, yeah. that's all there is to that's know it. about uh, me. All done. I have a nine year old little boy. He oh. has autism. Um, his name is Aiden and he is just, He's so cool. He is like the light of my life. Um, I recently just moved here from, well, I guess I already said that. Cut that out. I, and I came here. She's a director too, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, I came here just for opportunity to kind of change my life three months ago. And that's about it. That's all I can think Three of months right in now. Vegas. Yeah. So coming from Utah, mm -hmm. right? Which well, we were at the coffee shop and I said, oh, you're from Utah. And it, it creeped her out, I think, or scared her or something. She's like, like, how do you know that? How do you know that? I'm like, well, it's kind Hello. of, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's on your hat, you know? So, um, so at any rate, she, she you moved here three months ago. Mm -hmm. So what's your experience living in Vegas for three months? I don't know. There's, there's like pros and there's cons. The pros are there's so much opportunity here versus in Utah, you're, it's kind of like one of those stagnant, you know, places. It's just everyone knows everyone and everything kind of just stays the same versus here. There's that movement of, mm -hmm. I think, different people coming in, cultures coming in, all of that. And there's constant growth, it seems like here. Um, so I like that about Vegas. Um, the people are a little bit weird. There's people are weird. People are a little bit hard. What do they grab you at a coffee shop they're, and drag you into the studio? They do, do weird interview? things like exactly what you just said. And then all of a sudden you're just yeah. like babbling away about your life in a studio. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly just like, like that. that. Yeah. I don't know. No, people are, they're very, um, for the most part, they're shut off. You are open, mm -hmm. but most, most of the time people are out here. Like they don't want to get to know you. They're very like hardened, yeah. which I kind of like get it, you're in Vegas. You don't want to, you don't want everybody knowing your business, you know, so. I wonder too sometimes, like we have nine people that come into town and then they leave. 
So yeah. does that give us like a cultural abandonment issue? Oh, for like sure. Like if you, if you had 9 million dads come in <laughs> and then yeah. you had 9 million dads leave. I'd have daddy wouldn't, issues. Wouldn't you have daddy issues? <laughs> yeah. I'm I not mean, saying you do. I wasn't projecting here. I? Maybe no, I, think <laughs> I have daddy issues. Well, that's a whole nother story. So, oh so gosh. we'll get into that. I, I, I'm curious. Um, I know a lot about Utah. Okay. A lot. Why? A ton about Utah. Okay. In fact, I was on the news for two and a half years in Utah. <laughs> what? Why? And you, you, yeah. No, I don't watch the news. You, so you never watch I NBC, CBS, ABC? I used to watch the news. No, okay. I'm one of those weird How news. How about the newspaper? Read the newspaper? Nope. Was in every newspaper there. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, every newspaper. This is the guy. So, I do need your autograph. Here, will you sign so, one of these for me? I, we'll, get, we'll get to that. <laughs> So uh, I was buying a racetrack for twenty-eight million dollars in Wait, Utah. Wait, was it the Larry H. Miller? Yeah, that literally is five minutes from my house. So yeah. I, uh, so I offered twenty-eight million dollars in Tooele, Utah. Okay. To Tooele. Okay. Uh, to the three commissioners that were there, and um, to buy the racetrack. What? And a guy from Gilly, the Gilly Group guy, he offered eighteen million, and they sold it to him. That doesn't even make sense. That's what I thought. Isn't that less money? That's I'm not going to math, million, but that's 10, 10 yeah, million less okay. money. So I sued the county. Oh. So I'm literally. You're I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I heard about you. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I heard about this guy. Weird. And I'm in your studio. I'm freaked out right now. I'm the Tula girl he's trying to get back at. Oh uh, my gosh. That's so crazy. Okay, continue with your story. No, I could so cry weird. about what happened to you guys. Uh, it's horrible. I'll cry with you. Should we have a moment? We I, do you know how bad it was for you guys? Yeah, I lived there. So, so Tooele is a incredible place. Um, I remember driving by the that there's that sign with the, all the kids where it says it's about time. Do you know what sign I'm talking about? I've lived there my whole life, and I have. No okay, idea we'll we'll, we'll get to that later. So <laughs> stay tuned for that one. I'll, I'll dig into that because that's a deeper story. But um, so Tooele, Utah, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful place. The people are incredible. I love the town. It's emerging into like a real town, and this track is like a hundred and thirty million dollar track. Actually, yeah. it's probably closer to two hundred million. So for me, twenty eight million dollars. You know, come on, who's not going to buy that, right? So when they didn't sell it to me, I sued the county. Um, and literally like 50 feet from where the commissioner sit is where the judge, Judge Atkins, heard the case, mm -hmm. right? And he ruled from the bench. And he, he said that the, that deal that was made to uh, the Gilly Group, a Chinese company, dead. That he, they had to sell it to the highest bidder. Not necessarily me, I didn't know that. My legal bills on that one particular, just that one case was like $560,000 uh -huh. for a three day trial. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was insane. Oh so, my gosh. And then I'm like, okay, I went on the news and I'm like, okay, so now they're gonna sell me the track, right? So then I upped my bid to $29 million, the exact tax amount from before, $29 million. I'm still getting a $130 million racetrack. So yeah, it's still it's a- like, so still. Still, and, and Larry H. Miller, the family, gave the track to Twilla for free. They, he, they gave it, the, literally the family gave it to Twilla. So this was a gift to Twilla County and they had an opportunity to get $29 million from me. Yeah. Right? Yep. So I was excited because I felt like I had won a big victory for you guys. I felt that I had like, won a victory, you were gonna get $10 million more. You, personally. I should yeah, have got $10 you, million. $10 million bucks. Yeah. Man, no, that doesn't, Tooele County is such a, I call it the armpit of the USA. It's like the weirdest. I'm, I'm freaked out right now, this is crazy. I mean, it's really weird actually. But this is strange. But, yeah, but yeah, wow. I wish that one of those dollars would have went in my pocket, that's for sure. Right? <laughs> they couldn't, at one point, they couldn't even afford their jail. No, they can't afford anything. They're out there. Well, maybe in the last like year, I feel like it's kind of like skyrocketed and like went up and stuff. Cause a lot of people from California and stuff are moving there and just making everything like boom. But I don't know. I don't know how well it's gonna. It's a neat place. In time, I think it'll be fine. 
Yeah. It's it's really cool there. It's pretty. I was I was gonna spend the next ten to twenty years in Tooele. I was insane. excited. We could have been neighbors. I was gonna build two hundred homes in there. Um, I was gonna build four condo tells, which Not would be bad. hotels on the track, right? Oh. Would have been like the best, most like incredible place to stay. Uh, lots of like cool club type cars, and then still have all the events. I was yeah. so excited about doing that, and would have brought in just so many jobs yeah like it would have been crazy that would have been good it would have been good because it does need more so a lot of houses are coming in but there's no opportunity hence why i'm here so you it's need like, a job to pay a for the crap ton of people how yeah. are these people gonna pay for anything my 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 <clears throat> i literally have in the other room actually, i actually have my plan in there so um <laughs> that's so weird <laughs> it's crazy, that right? That's so weird. I'm kind of glad you didn't, though, because we keep saying, which it doesn't matter now, but we keep saying, like, at home, like, there, people need to quit coming here. Like, we don't even have enough water. Yeah. We don't have anything. We don't have the re So it's like, people just need to stop coming in there. They need to go to, like, Salt Lake and stuff. Leave Tooele kind of smaller. Wow, so there's a real cultural thing in Tooele oh, about yeah. staying small. It needs to stay small. Well, they're in, and, and this is one of the things I covered on, on the plan was they're in this really, like they either need to grow up and be a real city yeah, or stay the way they are. Because yeah. there's a thing across in business where you need so many rooftops, so much income to support certain types of businesses. They're right in the throes of having yeah. just enough population to completely have tons of businesses Overnight, like you ever wonder why, like all of a sudden, Walmart and 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 uh, every all different places pop up out of nowhere. It's because the demographics hit a critical mass, and then all of a sudden, the whole economy just blows up in an area. And Twill was like from the demographics I saw were right in the throes of it. So, so yeah, this was what was presented. Oh my gosh, that is so weird. See. What? Uh, anyway, all kinds of stuff. That, I mean, so, honestly, it kind of sucks that it didn't happen because, like I said, it just sits there. Do you know how much money you guys ended up getting? Nothing. Yeah, didn't we get... I don't know. So, when it finally closed, I think it was like... Because uh, I won that lawsuit, then I then I had another lawsuit and, and, and got through that one. Um, there was like two or three cases that went through. And at the end of it, I kept winning all the cases because... The, the, yeah. the company wouldn't pay more than $18 million. So at the end of it, it closed for 18 million. And then I think Twilla wrote a check back for 13 million to them. Oh my gosh. At the end, when I calculated everything, Twilla got about $3 million because of legal fees and all that mm. kind of stuff. My, mine was like a million five in costs. That is so crazy. So to go through that whole process, I'm like, how, why, why was it so important that you sell? And it, the only thing I can think of is he's a billionaire and I'm not. Yeah, right? probably. It probably had a lot to right? do with that. It was discrimination. Mm -hmm. Total discrimination. Yeah. I think it's good and bad. It's like there, you can make an argument for how bad it would have been. Yeah. For sure. I can make that all day long. I went to the town, went to the places, and I can make the argument that you guys are suffering. Oh, yeah. Because you have one foot... Mm -hmm. in a real town and mm -hmm. one foot in a small town mm -hmm. and it's ripping you guys oh, apart yeah. because you have a, a restaurant that'll open and oh, then it'll yeah. close and, th and then it'll open and then it'll close yeah. and it's just like you guys are teetering Most, on where you, you, where you should be. Yeah, no small businesses make it. I was telling your friend that I had a small business and it was gone within, I think I had it for seven months. And well, what type of it, business? It was a spiritual business. I spiritual? had like a holistic spiritual it. business. Yeah. And really? It was, yeah, it was fun. I loved it. I loved it so much. I bawled like a little baby when I had to let it go. Yeah. Um, but I tried and I tried and I tried. And you either, <clears throat> like you have to have a lot of money in order to like have a sustainable business, right? Like you got to, which I was like. So what was, let's let's dive in if you don't mind. Can no, we dive that? into that? Yeah, dive All right. Into it. So. What, what made you decide to start a spiritual business? <clears throat> so I actually, so I've done hair for 11 years. Well, ish, I've done it since I was 15. I haven't like had my license for 11 years. And I, um, I just was like ready to try something new. And I am always, 
dipping my toes into I was also telling your friend like I've done photography I do tattoos I do hair I do blah 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 like all these things right and there was these two men that were they owned the business mm-hmm. and I would constantly go in there and my like I don't know I'm a little hippie weirdo and like really? my okay. yeah so uh-huh. I know I don't look like it today but this is not how I usually dress like I usually am all like bohoed out but so I am very into like energy and intuition and the spiritual part of life and all of that so I would go in to visit their store all the time and um they were going to be moving to Oregon and so they were trying to sell it and I basically well not basically I put all my money into it and I was just like I'm going to give it a try because I didn't want to do hair anymore do you mind talking about what all your money was Uh, yeah. No, it's okay. Lot. I mean, don't have a lot of money, but so. No, most people think that in order to have a business, I got to tell you, I know that sounds really cruel. I just put her on the spot. <laughs> but most of the businesses I've started was with no money at all. Absolutely zero money, zero zip money. In fact, one of the, I started a framing shop and uh, two guys, Dan and Matt, that had a crush on me that was in San Francisco. They were gay, but I'm not that way, <laughs> but I don't have nothing against it. Yeah said like they were moving and I grabbed the equipment for probably, a, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand dollars. I paid them off. I started a framing company and it was profitable in one month from a thousand. So I'm not trying to put it on the spot. I'm just trying to <clears throat> so show you guys that it doesn't take a lot of money yeah. to start something um, that could be incredible because I made a lot of money in the framing business. Yeah. So with that it. said, do you feel comfortable? Telling no, yeah, us? I'll tell you. You sure? Absolutely. I, do, I don't want to ambush you here. No, you're not. Um, you're, I'm not crossing I'm not, like, lines. I'm, I'm never ashamed of like, okay. I am not a wealthy woman. I have okay. never been a wealthy woman and I am not a person. I have, like I said, I'm a single mom with a, a kid that I, you know, have taken care of with anyways. But so okay. I. So how much did you say? Because so people are going to keep. Uh, I know. So. Before I started this one, mm-hmm. I had I had started the salon with my best friend. We had like dumped, um, I think I put in like four grand of my money into that. Okay. Then a few months later, like give or take, maybe like six months, I dumped another, I think I dumped, don't quote me on this because it, it was a couple years ago, but I think I ended up giving them four grand down. Mm-hmm. So that was like the rest of my savings. Okay. And then, and that was to just like buy their entire inventory. Um, there's a lot that goes into that, but so I ended up in buy, buying their entire inventory and then I still had to pay them like an allotted amount of money every mm-hmm. month. Um, so what she's talking about is what they call owner carry. So an owner will carry most oftentimes the people that'll take your business because I'm a business broker. I'm licensed to do this stuff, by the way. So is they'll take and say, how much have you got? They want out of the business, right, badly, and they don't want to close the business. And many businesses get closed all over the country that are actually good, sustainable, profitable businesses, which is what I hope to invest in. I hope to find people like you that need four grand and say, here you go. Yeah. Like, that's like my goal of this channel. Yeah. My ultimate dream is to invest in thousands of people, millions of dollars, a hundred million bucks into people that start their own businesses. Yeah. Find good, honest people, yeah. right? That mm-hmm. aren't wealthy, mm-hmm. that I can help. Like yeah. that's the mission of like my real mission. That's yeah. what I'm really, what scares me the most about being stressed out about even YouTube or anything like that is not getting the opportunity to help people. Yeah. That's what scares me. None of the other stuff, but when I can't help somebody yeah, that- like There's so much more you could be doing to, to help contribute. people. Yeah. So they'll carry, owners will carry. You can walk into a lot of businesses and not even put that much money down Mm -hmm. uh, other than maybe buying the inventory. And what you're financing is what's called the goodwill, the goodwill of the company. The idea that there's this thing that's been, that people know now is there, the spiritual store, and that people will continue to come there because they know it's there. Yeah. Because it takes a while for you to remember, I think about like what you know somewhere is um, how long it took you to realize it was there. I've driven oh, yeah. by places for two years and then yeah. saw it for the first time. Yeah. Right. So yeah. It, it's kind of crazy. So yeah. $4,000, you go in, I but dove in. that that's, and that's everything you had. That's everything I had. And I was still trying to maintain 
doing that. Plus I had the salon, so it's kind of, wow. I like, I put the business right next to my salon so that I could like run back and forth between the two. Oh my God. And it was, yeah, so I was like double dipping. I call that business Tourette's. I, oh yeah, that's, it freaking felt like yeah. that, man. I was like, yeah. Yeah. you know, like I could not. You walk over to the hairstyle. <laughs> yeah. How are you today? <laughs> you walk over to the spiritual side. I'm just like, mm. everybody needs to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm in the background just like, oh my God, oh like my wanting God. to bash my head into a wall. That's awesome. Um, and I couldn't bow. Balance it. I mean, I couldn't because the money just like wasn't there at the spiritual spiritual store. So you take it over, uh -huh. right? Did you get a chance to look at the three year sales history? I did, and if I'm being completely honest, and it has nothing to do with them, like they're great individuals. Um, I just because of the town we were in, I don't think that it had a chance. Um, from like location. Location there is like prime. You've got to have the right location. And then I took it from a shitty look or sorry, a crappy location to another crap location. Yeah. Um, thinking because I have my I know heart exactly into it, why you did it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, it's gonna work because I want it to work. Well, yeah, that doesn't happen. Like you've gotta have the smarts behind it and the three year or like the history behind it. It was it didn't it wasn't telling. Like it did not or it was telling, it didn't you know, it wasn't making money. No, it wasn't making. So money. you bought a business for four thousand dollars, which was basically uh, I have a thing in the that I talk about in the course called failing forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you buying spiritual product, mm -hmm. um, that at the end of the day, if you close your business, you could sell it for the same price you bought it for. Mm -hmm. Then the risk you took wasn't as bad. <sighs> well, what happened? Is that how you were thinking? Uh I don't know what to know. You weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking. You were just that. excited. I well, I was excited, but then I knew that if I if I failed, mm -hmm. everything that I sold, right. I had to pay them that money. Like I didn't get to keep that money because okay. I was still paying them. I like signed a contract. Okay. So it was it was literally all on faith that I was going to make this work. So and anything that so anything that I because this I did end up having to close my doors. Mm -hmm. I had to give them all of the money for the product. So I bought their product. Basically, I double bought everything. Oh my God. So, yeah. okay, just to give you an example, this happens like more often than not. Yeah. Uh, mainly because people don't get business brokers. Yeah. So let's say she called me, right? And um, as a business broker, and she said, I have this business I want to buy called a spiritual. It was Blue Antler. It was called Blue Antler. Okay, Blue Antler, a spiritual place that I'm buying the, uh, basically all the merchandise is $4,000. And I would say, okay, how much does it net, mm -hmm. net per year? Are you asking me? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't even know. I have no idea. Like, so you I, didn't have the financials three years back? I did, back? but it was like, they, it was so like fluctuating. Like it did not bring in that much money at all. But I like, never mind. go ahead. What were you gonna say? So this is one of the traps people get into believing they can um, create something that some sort of miracle, it's right? Like, yeah, it's I'm the entrepreneur worker. disease. <laughs> I have it. Uh, it's deep within my veins. Mm -hmm. um, I have the virus disease, whatever you want to call it, yeah. of believing that I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurs are typically those people that you tell them you can't do something. Watch, watch this. And they will say, I, I don't think you can do it. Yeah. And, I, oh, and instantly, it, I am, like, it like, mm -hmm. makes me so mad. I just am like, yes, see? I can. Like, I'm, yeah, see? And then even if I know that I can't, hence that business, I'm yeah. like, I'm going to do it. And, I, and, and it's like that's, a that's the, that is the trick. So part of like, I think over my time, because I'm like super old. <laughs> so old. 200 years old. Yeah. Right? 300 at least. Yeah, 300 at least. Yeah. But basically is to step back and go, okay, like for example, Elon Musk, right? If his company's trading for 154 times its earning, he's not God. Yeah. Like if you look at another company, it trades for 13 times what it makes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's a stretch. Yeah. Okay. For a human being that has competitors, right? Like now he's got with the truck Ravian, he's got a competitor now in the truck, you know, Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. right? So you look at that and we'll get into Jeff Bezos later, right? When we talk about the other thing. So uh, basically, I don't know how he could actually get that, yeah. right? Get there. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a business like 
the if it made ten thousand dollars a year, right? Yeah. That the multiplier, the rule of thumb, typically in a business is three times, two and a half to three times okay. what its net income is. Mm -hmm. Net income. I don't, are you asking You're me what cringing, that is? Right? I, I know. Could, I'm I like, just... I'm so bad at math. Are you asking me what so it is? So if it if it made ten thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. it would be worth. Ma well, be I'm like you gotta answer this. I'm so bad at math. I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, ten thousand a year would be two and a half times. It would be twenty five thousand dollars. Answer your own question. I'm but like, I'm so but bad then you've got to minus out what you could pay somebody to yeah. do your, to do your job. But I was doing the job, so I was like trying to. So like you weren't counting yourself. So the <sighs> how much was the business really worth? Oh, maybe, maybe. When I bought it, because I tried like figuring it all out, mm -hmm. I think the most it was worth, and if they watch this, I'm so sorry, I think it was like 1500 bucks is probably what the business was actually worth. Actually that's worth. pretty. That's pretty generous. You're nice. Mm -hmm. you You're think? so nice. Yeah, I feel like them bucks. having to like... I, I mean, yeah. honestly, it's probably worth... Um, and we So we have typically two types of sales that we typically do. One is a stock or company transfer. Mm -hmm. The other is going to be an asset transfer, okay. right? An okay. asset purchase. So for you guys learning, hey, so asset purchases, you just buy this stuff. Yeah. Good luck, more power to you. Yeah. And then you feel like, and they get out with selling their stuff without liquidating it. That's what I should so when we sell a business and it becomes a liquidation sale, typically we get about half of half of what the merchandise mm -hmm. is worth. So them with a unmotivated buyer yeah. probably would have sold the $4,000 worth of stuff for two. Yeah. Realistically. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's on it. Like, yeah. Like, and then you right. sign a note, a commitment to pay. <laughs> oh, it's cringy to even like think about it. I try not to like look back on that. Do you realize though that you not telling that story, there are hundreds of thousands of people that are repeating this. Yeah. I see this all the time, but nobody wants to listen to me. Like when I make, <laughs> when I make content that is to try and help people. Listen to this. Um, no one will listen. They need to because. I, I'm like, I could have, if I would have, if you would have just, if you would have been, if I would have been at the coffee shop in Tooele, which I went to that Starbucks right there, which is next to Dick, <laughs> Dick's there. Barbecue. I worked there. <laughs> I went to that Starbucks every freaking day for like two and a half years. You want to know what's crazy? You probably went there when I worked there. I will. I, 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 that's funny. I bet you. I, I bet, bet you. I like, was like, what do you want? Like a mocha latte? Yeah, there? probably. That's every so single. And I had so many meetings there. And then, of course, I went to the and spoke at some of the meetings and stuff like that's... that. So if we would have met and I could have talked to you. They, you, you, I would have been the guy that out of the blue, they would just have meant, oh, she just met the devil. <laughs> oh my God, this is horrible. Because I, I would have sat there and I would have said, look, if you sell your merchandise, it's four grand. It, desperate seller would be two. We'll give them three. Yeah. Right? I, I, and then yeah. how long of a lease did you sign? This is it, another one that's going to hurt It you. was until I paid. Because... Okay, so get this, it was... So, yeah, it gets deeper. I already know, I know these stories. 32 companies, 17 industries, but again, nobody cares to... I, all my stuff's free, I'll tell everybody anything they wanna know, I'll help them. So they wanted 15 grand for the whole business. And I said, yeah. well, I'm not gonna give you 15 grand. Mm -hmm. And then they were just like, okay, and then they were gonna... <laughs> Especially because you ain't got it. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm not gonna... <laughs> Not yeah. paying 15 grand. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. And so I told, because then they're like, okay, we're going to go with a different buyer, yada, yada. Well, then. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, fell sure. Through. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it fell sure. through. Yeah, I always hear and about those other buyers. I know. So then, which it was. I've never I met think, those other buyers, by the way. I think you didn't? I've never met other buyers. I, I think, I wonder if it's yeah. all like, it's a thing. Yeah, they're just like, it's a thing. Other buyer. It's a thing. Other buyer. They're really? Like, What's yeah. their name? That I is should it. have. What's their name? I, yeah. Well, and I know that they did have other buyers, and I think the the other person could see that it wasn't worth what they were asking, and they were. But me, I'm like, okay, I'll still take it, and so I took it for eleven five. 
but I only that's had called the... FOMO folks yeah fear of missing out I had... and she didn't want to fall into the sumo category which, which is, is straight up missed out <laughs> right so yeah that's okay, exactly right. yeah. well because I was like I'm, all right this is gonna change my life you know I'm gonna like do something besides hair and I'm stoked and yeah well so then I was supposed to pay that over the next little bit and they you know they got really angry with me when I decided that I didn't want to have it anymore and so then that's when we kind of settled on I'll I'll um I will pay the like whatever is sold I'll give you guys that money for what I sold which I understand why they were upset you know I signed a contract I should have stayed true to my word and whatever but I should have been smarter and but I learned a lot from it you know, saying... Okay, so I got to stop right here. So, <laughs> Just like, shut up. <laughs> uh, here's the other thing. When you find out that you have lemons and you thought you had mangoes, it's time to pick up the phone and do something that most people do not want to do. And it's called renegotiate. We do it in our personal life. When we don't like stuff, we renegotiate the terms of the deal. Um... In this particular circumstance, I'm all about keeping your word, honoring your agreements, the whole bit. But there comes a time when somebody takes from you and you feel ripped off, robbed, and it's nobody's fault, right? If she could have, if you would have miraculously turned this around, but they knew also what they had and they knew also what it was worth. And they were running from something they didn't want to be tied to. They got you to sign up for the gig. And now you're having the conversation that they're disappointed. The reality is it's time to negotiate and renegotiate the terms of our agreement. Because had I known what I know now, that it would never have been this way. It never, I would have never. You know, been. that's why most people want to be paid in full. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Because... What happens is once you find out the reality, yeah, right, then you you call and try and renegotiate yeah. or you just stop altogether. Yeah. Well, and there could have been looking back, like there could have been better things that I could have done better. Um, definitely shouldn't have been trying to do two businesses, but I was doing it because I the one wasn't keep bringing me anything. Yeah, and yeah. so I had to do what I had to do to keep a roof over my head. I could have picked a better location. There were so many things I could have done better to probably make it run better. And then it would have never happened. Still that maybes way. though. Do you realize maybes. all those are maybes? 100%. You could have been in the best location yeah. and failed. Yeah. I've, I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. Ooh, Me. Yeah. Yeah. I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. Like, Here's the kicker. Like, there, nobody has that like secret. Yeah. It's all a lie. I mean, it is all a lie. It's all a lie. It's a facade. There is no real secret. Anybody who says they have a secret, they're lying. They're We're they're all there. doing the best we can. We are. You know? The best part about it is, that, guess what? They moved back to Utah, and now the Blue Antler is theirs again. Oh. <laughs> so they're back there, working it. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it's just, it's funny the way that everything works out. So uh, the other thing, the, the funny thing too is that... Um, you know, you have passions, mm -hmm. hobbies, and businesses. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's in the course, actually. We talk about that. Let's put the link, enter a link yeah, yeah. here. So, but the, the, well, we don't, I don't want to see people get hurt. No, you know? yeah. And, you don't want someone to go through this horror story that yeah. have for you. But it's really funny how a lot of people get caught up in the fact that they're so happy about what they want to do that they don't realize that they're really buying a hobby. Yeah. Right. Or yes. they're embracing in their passion. A lot of people that get in racing, you know, or mechanic type stuff, or let's say remote control cars, mm -hmm. uh, parts, you go to those places, you're like, how are you guys doing? And they're like, uh, not good. Yeah. It's cause it's a hobby. Yeah. Right. And so many hobby type stuff where people, passionately love it the music business is another one mm -hmm. lots of people in the music business make no money yep right they're not thinking they're not treating it like a business which yeah. is a whole nother problem yeah but it's it's a passion yeah and it's a hobby yeah um a business makes money yeah yeah right? you almost have to not be so invested emotionally 
yeah. in it. And like, yeah, you do. You can't have both. And I realized that quickly after I, it's probably a month after I got so it. So if we flip the script and I'll give you a scenario where it does work, same, same concept. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you were working eight hours a day and you were making a quarter of a million dollars a year. You were a rep or whatever it may be for Ford or whatever, or for Larry H. Miller's uh, finance company. I think it's called Prestige mm -hmm. or something like that. Finance company or Premier something. I used to use, I used them. Okay. I had mm -hmm. a bunch of car dealerships too. So at any rate, um, you were banging it out and doing great over there. And you had this store that you went to and worked maybe three or four hours a day and you had somebody helping you run the store. Mm -hmm. But as a result of that, you were in touch with all the energy stuff that you're excited about. Mm -hmm. You were in touch with all the different people that come through there. You mm -hmm. start a podcast, a YouTube channel, and, and you're engaged in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally different vibe, yeah, right? Yeah, totally different thing. Then yeah. maybe worth it. Yeah, right? you have that balance though which a lot of people don't know how to, they don't know how to see that balance when it's like, especially with the way that it happened with me. I was like, just one person living on a dream. I have, here's yeah. my $3,000, $4,000. Let's try and make this work. No. It wasn't the correct way to do it. That's there, sure. There's no, I mean, it's, it's, it's not your fault. It's just, it, it and, and people are gonna do this no matter YouTube or whatever, people are gonna do this forever. Oh this, yeah. They're gonna do exactly what you did. It's just the, it's a, it's, it's a human thing. It is, it you know really I mean? is. It's, a, it's an entrepreneur thing. It's, it is. if people tell you you can't do something and you wanna do it, you're probably an entrepreneur. Yeah. I, I, you know, that was one thing I used to do when I was, you know, uh, training good salespeople is I, I would tell them when they'd come in, yeah, I don't think, I don't think you can do this job. You would like specifically tell them that to yeah. put that fire in their soul? I, yeah, I would say like, you know, um, I, I don't think you can do this. Yeah. I really don't. And then they would tell me, I, no, I mean, I don't think you have the, I don't think you, I just don't think you have it. And then the, like, the, that would like weed the If they agreed out. with me, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're gone. If they don't believe in themselves. Yeah, I don't want them. I, you know, I, cause to try and build people up every day, I've had thousands of salespeople yeah. To build people up every day is exhausting. Yeah. I need somebody bringing some fire, yeah. some some wood to the fire. Yeah. I can't like bring the wood, light the fire, yeah. bring the wood, light the yeah. fire, and then nobody else wants to, everybody's like throwing stones. <laughs> oh, you could have said it better. You could have like inspired me better. Or I've said yeah. that before and you're like, what? Why aren't you doing this for yourself? Yeah, why don't you do this for yourself? I, you know, so it was one, I really pushed yeah. Uh, and I plan to do that, spoiler alert, when I invest in companies. Yeah. I plan to tell people you would, like, for example, let's say you were wanting me to invest in a company that you're looking at buying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? You, like, let's say it's a salon because okay. you know the business and mm -hmm. whatever it may be. I, I check you out. I find out that you're really good in the salon business. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking at buying a salon. Mm -hmm. I'd probably tell you, yeah, I don't think you can do it. Let's try it. Let's try it right now. I don't think you can do it. Um, okay, wait, are you, <laughs> hold on, we gotta cut this part out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. wanted me to. So we're gonna, we're gonna buy that salon over there. The salon makes a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. We're gonna buy it for 3 million bucks. Okay. Right? All right. I'm gonna put up the money okay. to buy it. I'm gonna give you 81% of the company. Okay. Right. 81%. Okay. Company makes a million a year. All right. And you don't think I can do it? And, and when you're like telling me all about it, I'm gonna tell you, I don't, I don't think you can, I don't think you can run that salon. Well, I think my thing would be like, why don't you think I could do it? I, I just don't think you can do it. Okay, well then I'm gonna push even harder to do it. Oh, you're talking about it now. I'm uh, talking yeah, to me. Ta I, I don't think you can do it. I can do it and I am well, How do I know it. you could do it? Um, I mean, I guess I'd show you the numbers and I'd show you my- What numbers? We haven't even bought the business yet. I guess it's me. I don't know what you're wanting from me right now. What are you saying? I want to know if I should invest $3 million in you. Absolutely. You should Why? invest but you, uh, you because got... I'm freaking awesome and I can do it. Look at me. Come on. I mean, I am worth $3 million. I'm worth more than You're this. worth way more than yeah, $3 I'm million. Worth like bucks. Come million. on. Get out of here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but will you keep that business? Do you have what it takes when people attack you, fire lab uh, file labor disputes? People come at you for discrimination. 
people come at you trying to say that you didn't pay your taxes? Do you have what it takes when everything comes at you, when your competition comes up with a better plan than you, when you don't have the right marketing strategy, when the entire salon exits because of some, you know, internal union that everybody got together and with some drama and next thing you know, we got an empty salon. What are you going to do? Well, I expect that place to pay it, pay me back. I've kind of, yeah, I've kind of already been through that. So I can tell you that. <laughs> I can tell you that. So, one, you know, you know, I know a little bit yeah, about the I salon business. I can 100% tell you that, yeah, it does happen. And you just, you, I, you do it. And I have done it. And I don't have this like big successful salon right now. Like I have a successful salon, but it's not like I'm. You have a salon. This, mm-hmm. Wow. I have a salon. Okay. He doesn't even know. This guy Alert. doesn't even know. Yeah. Alert. Another surprising event. <laughs> She yeah. owns a salon. It's just a little guy. And, you know, we've got people coming and going all the time, but it's, um, it's. Do you want to plug the salon? Do I want to what? Plug it. Play the salon. Plug. 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 Where is it? Where can they go? Oh, it's in Tooele County. It's, uh. The YouTube goes everywhere. Um, it's in Tooele Well, it's, it's called 48. Salon 48. Salon um, 48. Yeah. It doesn't even have like an official name. It's basically, it's like a very homey vibe. Like All right. people just come in, do their job and they leave. It's actually really cute. You can all look it up or you can look it up on Yeah. We'll Instagram. put the link down below. Yeah. 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 It's cute. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think if you want something, I mean, if like me, I'm a very like driven person. So it's like, basically, yeah, if you tell me that I can't do something or you're not going to believe in me, then I'm going to do every little thing to make sure that it does happen. And it's mainly just like a force with inside of myself. It's like, okay, you got to prove everybody around you wrong. That's a big reason I'm here. And that's what I really want to talk about is that internal force. Mm -hmm. Like... Meeting me in the coffee shop or even talking mm. to me, right? Would you ever think that I would stand toe to toe with your county? No, never. Right? Like, no, I, th- it is the most random little, like that. I, you're, you're like a calm, chill dude, just sitting over there minding your own business. I could not see you like, you know, roaring up like towards an entire county to try and get something that you believe in and that you want like you were do you just- realize they escorted me off out from the i was at the pulpit and the sheriff escorted me away from the place what it was you're just losing them. your it's mind? on the news i was calling them out i'm gonna have to i was calling them out i gotta become a news right person. there i was calling what? them out what yeah I'm so confused. I'm going to have to look you up. This is so weird. Crazy, I, right? Yeah. I'm so, so but I think, but that, so I think that you, you have, it, there's an essence of being just wonderful and loving people and just caring for them. Like you do at the mm-hmm. salon and making them like, just feel really good. Mm-hmm. But as an entrepreneur, there's got to be this like solid rock. I call it like, just, I'm an Iron Man in the inside. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Got yeah. like nice frosting, yeah. you know, it's all cute and all fluffy, the, the maybe some fluffy shoes, <laughs> but inside you're going to find solid titanium yeah. rods. You're sturdy. Yeah. yeah. You and are. I won't quit. No. I'm, I won't sleep. Nope. Like when, you know, yeah. So it's. I mean, that's, you are, you got the true heart of an entrepreneur. I mean. So, and you do too. And that's what I was saying is that that's part of what my thought is. Cause you said it right. When we start talking mm-hmm. about it, when I go in. I'm going to find that, that grit, the that, for that, it. that I ain't going to back down. You got to have it. I mean, you got to have that. You can't be weak. And like, there have been points. Don't get me wrong. I've not always been like this. Like I'm not, I have failed. I've bawled my eyes out in fetal position. Just like <laughs> I cannot go on another minute. I can't believe this is happening to me. But then, and a big reason coming down to Vegas is we're rebuilding the blocks to our foundation so that I can become sturdy again and be like, okay, you know, because I do have that entrepreneur, you know, soul where I'm like, there's so many things that like I want to do. And you just happen to sit next to like (laughs) I know a Titan, (laughs) an entrepreneur Titan, typing over there on my computer, and you just like started talking to me. Don't dream around me. (laughs) Yeah, that's because every single day, because I've had to get to a point where I was just like, if I want something, you have to just like 
you have to put it out there. And it's not that I have a vision board and I'm out there writing on it every single day saying, okay, today I'm going to meet Andrew and he's going to, you know, put me on a podcast and it's going to like start a next chapter of my life. Like that's not even how I think it's the, the fact of my bubble, my energetic field is pushing out to everyone around me and drawing them in like a magnet towards me as far as like people who are like-minded people mm -hmm. who are good people not just because i have a lot of people that have burned me you mm -hmm. just heard a couple things you know and so i'm constantly just aware but not hyper fixating on it i'm aware of i'm going to draw in like those building blocks to my sturdy foundation and so yeah, you got to have that fire, but you don't have to, I think people constantly are trying to, they work too hard at it. There's a difference between like working hard and then there's working too hard. Like you're, you're so honed in and focused that you, you don't just let life happen. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're just like freaking out. And when you freak out, you're like repellent. People don't want to be around you and people don't want to, they're just like, Ooh, you know, you're, it's kind of like icky, but when you're just like, that's like when we started this, I'm like, okay, let's like center yeah, ourselves. Right. I was just joking, but it's like, if you have that like calming of like, well, whatever I need is going to come to me and you just, you know it. And so, yeah, that's, I'm kind of went off on a tangent there, but. No, no, that was good. It was good. Yeah. yeah cool. So I think the, the fire that people, I think everybody has, it depends on what it is for, for you, but yeah, every single person has it. Yeah. I'm wondering like, you know, it's uh. So, you know, does it, I mean, I kind of slow down for a second in the sense that how does it hit home with me? Yeah. You know, um, because I have a tenant, I, what part of what my process is, is to, to lay the intensity so that it gets me to push forward, to do, to do things. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself, um, but I also think, you know, I think part of it is I'd like to put so much pressure on me that I, I, I forge coal into a diamond. I want to, yeah. I want to be that good. Like I, I want to help and serve people and I want to become the best version of myself. And I want to make sure that I can, you know, bring the best out in people. And I just think that if I can't, um, deliver what they i mean i've spent 38 years learning everything that yeah. i've learned yeah and i want to share it with the world yeah right and i'm dying to and i, yeah. I watch all kinds of fake people that people follow oh yeah and i'm glad they follow them i'm yeah. so happy that somebody's doing well yeah from somebody else following and making money off of courses of, of people that have no experience yeah but you know i'm happy for them and they're both happy so yeah. it, that's called business yeah right but it, I would love to get to the point where I can really help people because yeah. there right now there's a trillion dollars in businesses that need to trade hands one trillion per year for the next 10 years. There's baby boomers with million dollar salons that need to sell them and can't find somebody to buy them. Yeah. real businesses, That's not hobbies, okay. right? Yeah, not real, hobbies. Yeah, real businesses that are thriving or they've been doing good. Yeah. That's. That's crazy. And you That's... could be making a million dollars a year and you're not with the same amount of time you do to make nothing. That is crazy. That's how did you even learn that? Why do you know that? <laughs> Why do you know that? I've started 32 companies in 17 <laughs> like, industries. Why does and this guy know this? Been a multimillionaire okay, four times. Okay, this leads me into the question of. Okay, the question. Yeah, the question, the question. of. Okay. What is it that like drives you to people to like want I know to, like, I told you all that, about how much I love my yes. my other half. And, yeah. yeah. Like what drives you to be this? What brings that out of you? Like what feeds that in your soul? I, I just want to help people. I just, you know, like I, I want people to do well. You know, and I, I feel like This is good. It's raw. It's like bringing out some emotion you, it's so good. It's, it's too much emotion, right? I love this. <laughs> this is so good. I'm sorry. I just can't talk. I'm no. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Thank no, you. It's for, good. Thank you for just talking. No, I love it. Cause I'm like, it's inspiring. Someone who has literally built an 
and what is that? An empire ship underneath yourself. You could have everything a man could want. And then, and usually at that point, people stop, right? They stop caring about those around them. And the fact that you're still um, very involved with everybody you come in contact with. I am a Joe Schmo off the side of the street. And you're like, what can I do for you? And what can you do for me? Like, what is the, and there's that good energetic exchange of like, and I'm huge on this. I'll say that all the time. There's gotta be that like exchange. I'm going to give you something and you're going to give me something. And you, I don't know. You don't even need to do that. You have everything. I, know, I, I, I do that every day. I'm like, the first thing I thought of when you were talking about how you're writing a book, she's writing a book. Um, I wrote a book and I was talking about how I was able to write the book, um, how hard it is and, and how grueling it is. And, and then also trying to encourage you to make sure that you kept going and then giving you tips about what will block you. You will block you. Mm -hmm. When you run into an obstacle you can't confront, yeah. And you'll set it down for longer than you need to. And you need to keep going. Yeah. Right. Yes. You need to go. Yes. Right. Do. So I, my heart is like, you know, for you. Yeah. And I'm like, but I have to be nice. I have yeah. to be soft. I can't be like, you know, like tough. My yeah. dad was. Yeah. My dad was like brutal. Like you will succeed. And he just wouldn't take any reasons, justifications, um, nothing. Like I had to do it. Like he just believed in me. I love like crazy that. believed in me. That is so amazing. And I was a millionaire by seventeen with two hundred employees. <laughs> oh, you were not. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I am not worthy. Like what the heck? This is insane. Yeah. So you were you've hit the highs and the lows, yeah. right? Because then you were homeless. You said. Yeah, I lived in a five by five storage unit. How do we go from millionaire at seventeen? to we can now we don't even have a pot to piss in basically um a, a series of cycles i ended up buying a bunch of companies it got to the point where i was worth 15 million dollars and um, had some crooked people take it from me um and by the time you could come back to it you can't get there yeah um and you're either buried in legal fees or buried in some other way i went from being worth 15 million dollars to eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in debt and so then you went from that to mm -hmm. how do we dig ourselves out of that so i was sitting i, I kind of i was sitting at starbucks and enjoying my coffee i i filled out unemployment you never file unemployment because it's not what people do it's it's my dad said you don't do it you're a taker if you do it you yeah. never take unemployment i feel that you never do anything and uh i had no income i had no job i had no nothing and uh, that's probably what got you back up on your feet. It did. Yeah, which I get that because I'm that person. And at that time, I was paying child support and I got my unemployment check and it was like literally garnished. Yeah. And then my passport was taken as well. So it was, oh you know, because I couldn't afford the child support. So they took the, check, the passport. I was trying to get stuff up and going again. I'm an entrepreneur. So it's like people look at you like, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like, how do I give you a job? You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You, 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 like, it was like, wait a minute, I'm kind of overqualified in some ways. I've had, yeah. you know, I could do anything in your yeah. company. In fact, I can do what you're doing. Yeah. Like, and it was just awkward. And I grabbed uh, one of the business like businesses I wrote in two, when I was um, 18 years old, I wrote a business plan called um, homes for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to help people sell their own homes, Yeah. right? And I pulled that plan up and I said, you know, I've never done this business. Okay. Right. And I remember just sitting there having coffee and saying, you know, I'm going to do something that uh, I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I got on the computer and I'd never used the Dolby before. And I built a magazine, um, a mock-up of it. I went out and in... Uh, in three weeks, I sold $106,000 in oh advertising. Oh my gosh. Like, this is the perfect example of if you believe in yourself, you can do absolutely anything. I keep going even when I don't believe in myself. Yeah, exactly. Because at that time, I was just 
doing it. I, yeah. I didn't believe I could do it. Yeah, but you didn't give up. You still did it. I had to hide the fact that I was homeless. Yeah, you did? Of course. Nobody knew you were homeless? No one. Oh. Not even my family. Where was this? I was gonna say. So where's this? Where's your dad? That's like I believe in you so I much. Stayed, like, I stayed away from him because you were like embarrassed. You were like I just you didn't, didn't want. I didn't want them to burden him. Yeah. Like, I didn't want them to burden him. Oh, you are such a beautiful human. That's insane. That's awesome. It's funny. A friend of mine who's a dentist that you know I know knew during this time. He um, <clears throat> he actually I slept on his couch one night the mm -hmm. first night. And he was talking about that night about rent and stuff like that. And I was thinking about my, you know, I made $175,000 yeah. in debt. The last thing I want to do is lose my friends yeah. to having to pay rent that I don't have. Yeah. So the next morning I was gone. Oh my gosh. And he brought it up later. He goes, um, you know, I can't believe you left. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I made hundred and seventy five thousand dollars backwards. The the bum is better off than I am. Yeah. Because he doesn't owe money. Yeah. Right? He doesn't he's not being sued mm -hmm. for money. He's not being attacked for it. His credit's not being destroyed. Yeah. You know, his life's not his financial life is not being destroyed. He's just there. Yeah. He's, he's like he's like better life. off than me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> You're like, hey, do you have any I, I, I envy your position. <laughs> Why? I'm broke and homeless. Well, you're not eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in debt. Like, by the way, do you have a dollar right now? Yeah. <laughs> Can I borrow your social security and identity, please? Let's just switch. You be me, because the difference of you being eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in debt probably isn't going to change. You're like, tag me in. Coach. But I want to rebuild my stuff. Yeah, it was it was crazy. So obviously we have like a ton, a ton to talk about. We could probably talk for the next two days. So, or well, yeah, forever. like forever. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for being yes. on the show and for being so honest and vulnerable. Absolutely. Thank you for having me after a weird little interaction for 30 minutes at a coffee shop. And it was a good little opportunity for me to come here and meet you. And this was fun. I enjoyed it. And maybe your next business you buy will be <laughs> one that'll pay you. Hopefully. We're crossing our fingers, not another bust, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you'll have some tools on on now what to look for when you buy a business. I'm going to go to that link. Or you'll just call gonna, me. Yeah. Hey. And say, hey, Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I'm going to call I'll help you, you and take your course and read your book. There, there, you, there go. you go. Nicole, everybody. It's me. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Love you guys.